we've seen two kinds of control flow, functions and conditionals. And now we've seen this idea of global state that our program can hold and manipulate values over its lifetime. Now we're going to use this to implement uh, game modes so that the user can enter many different kinds of data and the range of what our programs can do is going to expand quite a bit. We're going to use what we just learned in this simple example of red green and implement it into our dice game so that we can have the user enter their name and the program keeps track of their name as the user plays the dice game. I loaded our script.js from the dice game back into VS Code. So now let's talk a little bit more about how we want this to work. We said that the user will be able to enter their name. And so that suggests that actually there's two modes in this game. One where the user is able to enter their name and the other mode where they're able to play the dice game. And so we need a global variable for that that keeps track of the mode. And we're also going to use their name later when they're playing the dice game. So we need a global value for their name as well. So first let's create the global value. And when the game loads there, the game is going to be waiting for the user to enter their name. So this is going to be, uh, I'm going to set now the value when the game starts, which is waiting for username. And then we can write the conditional. So let's write that at the top of the main function. If current game mode equal to waiting for user name. And what we want to have happen here is set the name. And Let's create, we said we needed a global value to hold the name. So let's create that at the top. And before the user enters anything, it's going to be empty. And once this condition is true, then we're going to set the name. And that's input, whatever the user typed in. The next thing is that this implicitly says that once the user has entered their name, then the game switches into a different mode, which is the dice mode. So we need to write that statement here as well. Which is that current game mode is equal to the dice game mode. So I'm just going to call this dice dice game. Okay. And then I'm going to write an output message to the user. So my output value equals to hello user. And then next we can talk about the dice game. So we have the dice game down here. And if the current game mode is the other mode, not waiting for user, if it's dice game, then we want to run this code. So we might write a condition like this. But this condition, these two conditions don't say that either current game mode is waiting for user or current game mode is dice game. So we need a 
slightly different construction if we want to express that exact thing. This current condition says do this if game mode is waiting for user. And on line 17, starting on line 17, it also says if game mode is dice game. So we want an explicit way to say either do the set the username or do the dice game, one or the other. Uh, and this current conditional construction doesn't say that. The conditional construction that allows us to be explicit about either one thing happening or another is else, else if. And this gives us the ability to say either one, run one block of code or run the other block of code. So let's implement else if in this logic. What I'm going to do is move this if over here. And now what this code says is that either this block here is going to run or the block over here is going to run between those two curly braces. And there's no possible way that both blocks are going to run, which was the case in the previous code. I've moved my dice game into the else if conditional. I only need to fix one more thing in this code, which is that I've mentioned my output value inside of line 14, but the only place where I've created my output value variable is on line 19. So I'm going to create this variable instead of on line 19, I'm going to create it at the very top of the main function. And it's going to start empty. So now let's see this in the browser. Now that the game is loaded, it's expecting me to input my name. Now that I've input my name, it's expecting me to input a guess for the dice. And the game works normally as it did before. The last thing we can do is add the username to the dice game messages. Let's see this in the browser.